All right. Good morning, O Christ. Friends everywhere on both sides of the world. Uh, there we go. Well, morning morning session seems to be dwindling now. There's a fire that doesn't care. It's Paul and Sue. Huh? It's his brother or sister. <laughs> We've killed three this morning. We've got to hire somebody to go in the house and hunt for rats again. Yes. But we did get rid of four rats yesterday. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Some people uh, catch catch rats to make pets out of them. Not me. Not me. They got to go. <clears throat> It just got to go. Okay. And I mean like right now. We got rid of one in our house. Amen. We can't do it. Amen. Hallelujah. We might need to buy a cat. But just, I don't like cats. She stayed I, just, I just want cats. But I tell you what. If comparing it to rats, I might have to. We, that's what we do. She said, I can have. There's a stray cat on our street. It's doesn't, I don't know whose it is. It's a stray cat. And it killed something big, looked like a rat in our front yard yesterday. Wow. The, but I don't, it might have been oh. maybe squirrel. It was either a rat or maybe squirrel. It's not our cat. Squirrels, <laughs> okay. I mean, yeah, either way, I don't care. Yeah. It's dead. <laughs> I've been missing. I've been missing hearing an owl. I'd like to hear our owl again. We must have moved on to. He needs to move back. Yeah, I He probably got tired of having a little eat on. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. And yeah, the nurse too. And and you know the hawk. Even I haven't even seen the hawk. You got a nest back on one of the trees. I haven't even seen the hawk in, in a while either. We used to have lots of lots of squirrels, lots of squirrels, and I've only seen like one or two. Amen. I think the owls and the hawk has cut down on our squirrel population. Good, because the squirrels are tearing up some of our roofs. Getting in the church building. I guess, I guess y'all needed to know all that, huh? Okay. Well, <clears throat> Brother Noel and Sister Monica is getting ready to drive away. They're going to be spending time in uh, Illinois, Iowa, Ohio, and Kentucky, and then be back here. Uh, in a week. I don't know if they can do all that in a week. Sounds more like two weeks to me. But anyway, the best for our friends, the best for our, our family. My goodness. Well, uh, you know, brother, somebody going in and out or something? Christina had some on her phone. Oh, phone. Okay, I heard the law is the door slamming. Lock slamming, not the door. Uh, Brother LeVon Boltner, you know, has uh, been uh, down for, I guess, for two years. 
pretty much down. Uh, and, uh, you, know, the, you know, for a while, uh, Mike and Angie were able to, or uh, were able to keep him at their home for a while, and then eventually uh, had to uh, put uh, Brother Lavon in a nursing home, which is where he's at. He, he's still alive, he's just, he's just not functioning as Lavon. Uh, but anyway, uh, his son, Mike, you know, passed away uh, just, what, a few months ago? I can't keep up time anymore. So he's gone. And then uh, this week, uh, Scotty's wife passed away. Now she, when Brother Randall called and we had prayer here several days ago, she was all, already looked like pretty much gone. She was in the hospital with COVID and gone into pneumonia. And uh, uh, Carrie's health, if I, even for a number of years, I've known it been very weak, uh, uh, physically, health-wise. So this COVID just hit her and killed her. Uh, when you have weak bodies, it don't take much sometimes. Uh, and that's what's happened. So anyway, uh, Brother, Brother Randall was telling me, but he also told me we, uh, that Scott's health was not good. That was Brother Randall's words. And, uh, uh, and sure enough, Carrie's passed on now. Um, all I can say is, uh, help them. Just help them. Yes. Help all the family. Help all the family. Brother Levon wasn't even uh, capable of attending his son's funeral uh, here a while back. And uh, so this is, this is really, uh, you know, the, the two boys is all, all they had, the two boys, uh, Scotty and Mike. And uh, anyway, it's, it's uh, tough news down there in Philadelphia. <clears throat> Yes, 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 it can. Just never forget to be compassionate for others because this could have been you. Yes. Still good because of COVID still around, preacher. Yeah. Well, let's yeah. be good to it. We got us a mom and a baby to protect. Yes. And everybody else's health. Yes. We yeah, we got we have to have protection. We uh, need protection, Lord. In Jesus' name. All right. Come on around, brother, brother Greg. Be our hot seat. Man, today. Spread your Bible. Yeah, I was like, what, what, what happened? You brought your coffee and not your Bible. <laughs> Gotta have the Bible. Okay. All right. Now, how about preaching to us? <clears throat> well, all right. Woo! 
How many weeks you can say, brother? Twelve weeks. So Woo. thirteen weeks ago, you wouldn't have been sitting here. I don't know. Shout out. Woo! Yes. Who is this man? Woo! What? What a difference. <clears throat> I enjoyed last night. That was a good message. Very good. They've all been good. Especially uh, that, I don't know, that was good last night. Hey, Amen. I'm trying to think, Brother Greg. I'm sorry to interrupt. Yes, sir. Uh, Brother uh, Shock, he, and I'm going to say it, but I might, may not say it right. If he was crucified, buried, and rose from the dead. What are you? What are you sweating? What are you sweating? Yeah. Is that, is that kind of, I'm trying to remember how you said it. You could remember probably. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he said, if he had, <clears throat> if he's conquered death, hell, and the grave, what are you sweating? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And he had been preaching that whole time about, in detail, about how the, what had happened during that, crucifixion and what he had done and and the night before about the cult and what was going through my mind and was about um you know am i am i too far gone and that's not talking about grace last night yes. and that's where it wasn't a thing of um it, it, it in it's just craziness but is god able when he said that all that was gone it was yes yes what are you sweating if he did all that are you are you are you serious are you really and it was just lock and it was lock <clears throat> so from then in the end it was done but um yeah i've been reading in acts and preachers and preaching in Acts. Well, he's been ahead of me the whole time, so I have been getting previews of what's to come. Um, but so many good things I'm learning because I don't. I've heard a lot of preaching out of Acts. I don't know if I've read carefully through Acts before, but um, talking about the Holy Spirit being given and of course the gentiles being brought to the gentiles um let's see where was i well we were just on that topic it's this is uh, thir chapter 13 verse 30 and <clears throat> this is where Paul is preaching. And he says, but God, but God raised him from the dead. And we've seen many days of them which came up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem, who were his witnesses unto the people. And we declare unto you glad tidings how that the promise which was made unto the fathers, God hath fulfilled the same unto us, their children, in that he hath raised up Jesus again, as it is written in, in the second psalm, thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And he's preaching to him, and I know this is not what he's meaning here, but I thought about where it says, God hath fulfilled the same unto us, their children. And I was thinking about the meeting. And, you know, we, we had the saved, if you allow me to say that, with that generation, the generation. But now we're seeing he's fulfilled the same unto their children. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes. And he's raised up Jesus. He didn't, and, and that, what we were just talking about, that lock has happened with a number of us who are now saved. More to come. There's more to come. We've heard yeah. the preaching. 
you got to, all you got to do is believe that he, Jesus was raised and return and repent of your sins, turn. And in fact, in verse 38, that's where it goes. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto yes. you the forgiveness of sins. Yes. You can be forgiven, yeah. clean, free, new. Thank you, Lord. And that's what it, I think was amazing to me, and I'm still trying to wrap my understanding around it, which is going to, going to be impossible to fully do. But how can I be new? completely new and free and changed. I don't know how, but that's okay. I don't need to understand how. It just happened. How was Adam created? I don't know, but I know what happened. And I don't need to know. I'd like to know one day when I get to heaven, I'm, you know, I'll, I'll get to see how it all took place, but I don't need to know today. And but all I know is once I was blind and now I see. Yes. And I don't know how to do brain surgery, but if I ever need it, I want to know that it gets done. And I don't need to know how it all works. And I don't need to, I don't know how to fix my truck if it breaks down. I'll take it to somebody who does. And that's what we do with him. If you if you need salvation and you need to get fixed, just take it to him. Just take it to him. And it says by in verse 39, the next verse, by all him that believe are justified from all things from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. We were under the law that was preached last night. We were under the law of Moses. We were dead. We could not be justified. Yeah. Could not talk about trying to do things ourselves and do better, do right live the life cannot happen it will not ever happen we cannot justify ourselves but to all by him all that believe are justified from all things and that's amazing that he he, he cleanses you from everything and you don't have to go back and say well what, what, wait what about that one time 15 years ago i remember now it's gone i don't even yeah. have to wonder Hallelujah. that's gone too yes from 13 weeks ago that's gone too Woo! from 27 weeks ago that's gone too i don't have to go back and do an inventory it's all gone that warehouse is gone <laughs> it's not there anymore and and then close the warehouse. Open the door. <laughs> it's clean. <laughs> it's empty. Brother Jason, we heard he tell you about how that they they clean out those trailers. When they're done, it's empty. And you can walk through and there'd be an echo in there because it's nothing there. And that's how it was. He's justified of all things. And then, <clears throat> um, and, and when they were saved. That, that says they were filled with the Holy Spirit. So God puts his spirit in you. And that's what was so hard to for me to grasp, I think, because I, being unsaved, you don't know what's going on. People talk. You just hear and you think you know. You, Your mind builds what you think it will be. It's not even remotely close he my my sweet wife's not here yet she's on trying to get here but um there she is and but she she would say you know he went home with me and <clears throat> that's exactly right god put his spirit in us when he saved us yes he goes with us he he said i'll never leave you never Never, not oh well. I got sick that one day, and I couldn't. I couldn't feel God real close to me. He's still there. Yes. Just if your physical gets down, it, it doesn't matter. Yes. If I get surrounded by an airport full of crazy people, he's still there. I don't like being there, 
but he's still there. And that's an amazing thing to understand is that how that God goes with us every day. And you know what? It's one promise that he has made and God cannot lie is draw near. If you draw near to him, he's going to draw near to us. So the more we can get into his word, listen to Bible, pray, the closer he's going to get to us. And that is another promise that uh, I found absolutely to be true. And I get so frustrated that you have to do earthly things. And you're doing right by doing a job, by doing work. God says to do that. You're supposed to do that. He commands us to do that. So, but it is frustrating because it takes you away from time that, well, you know what? I could be reading my Bible. I could be watching that. Um, but as long as you make the time count, you do it to his His glory, then you give quality to his, him and his word. But yeah, I tell you what, the waking up through the night and in the morning is as is, is sweet as anything. And uh, there was no hope before. It's hard to... to verbalize the feelings and the understanding of the heart before how could a person believe that they're saved and they have eternal life with no joy no peace and all your mind all disrupted almost all the time and thinking, well, you know, I just, not the best Christian. Well, you're not a Christian at all. I mean, if, if God's not there with you and you aren't craving to be in his word and to be here as much as you can be, then, yeah, something's, something's wrong. So you need to get fixed one way or the other. And I'm so glad that he fixed me permanently. Yes. Permanently. Complete new person. And I thank him for doing that. That Elizabeth, was amazing. Excuse me. Elizabeth, here, right here. Everything's all right, darling. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Uh, you know, we, we, uh, we got folks uh, helping in whatever manner with uh, Sister Maddie and uh, baby Noah and uh, and we and this what we was praying a while ago and so we 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 got a lot of things ongoing and uh, uh, Sister Angie and Sister Tina and Sister Debbie been called out to Sister Irene's and uh, Sister Irene can't walk, and they're they're with her at her house trying to. They don't know what to do, and so this is this is for our for our ladies, our sisters that are there with this Sister Irene. Help them find what to do. Yes. Find what to do, and. And they'll be giving you thanks for it. Yes. And we will too. In Jesus' name. Didn't mean to interrupt, but that was pretty important. We stopped and prayed. Yes, um, good to be saved. Uh, it's good to, uh, to have the old account paid for. Yes. It's, for. it's forgiveness of sins. Uh, I've said it a thousand times, maybe two thousand before, but uh, uh, 1962, that'd be about 61 years ago, I think. 
And uh, I didn't, I, I really didn't know I was getting up saved. Uh, because I, I really didn't have understanding what saved was. And it was a Bible term, but I didn't understand. But it just so happened that uh, lots of prayers have, have been ongoing by others. Uh, you know, when I was in trouble with my life at the age of 21. And uh, I began to be have some real troubles in my, con it was my conscious. I didn't know where my soul was, I didn't know where my mind was, I didn't know where my heart was. I just knew where my conscious was. And then uh, when uh, Patsy's grandmother uh, talked to her on the phone and got a promise out of her to come to the meeting. It was on Wednesday and we, uh, uh, we went uh, because of her promise on that Wednesday night preacher. I didn't know him. I think he was from Mississippi as far as where he was from. Evangelist, that's all I knew about. Didn't know his name. Never seen or heard from him before. And he, he, he preached a message on hell that night. Didn't bother me a bit. I was thinking, Patsy Ben, she's Presbyterian background. We've been married two years. She didn't want to go to church nowhere. I visited the Presbyterian church down the, down the street there, walked to it uh, probably two or three times, if not more, uh, during that two years. But otherwise, I, went, I didn't go to church at all. I thought, this message on hell, this is good for maybe make my wife into a Baptist. You know, I grew up a Baptist, I thought. I thought I'd say forever because I was a Baptist and been baptized in the creek. I uh, really, I thought if I died in sin, I'd have to go to heaven. And uh, I went home that night. That message never touched me. But my sins were getting worse in my mind. And on uh, uh, for for months, I'd been planning with uh, a number of people for a house party. We'd had some of that before. We were looking for a big one. It's going to be a blowout house party on Saturday night. And uh, so uh, I knew what what was in my mind and what kind of sins we intended. And uh, so I uh, so went home and I, I've been taught in the, the church, Baptist Church of where I grew up, I've been taught this, uh, what do you call it? Anyway, basically uh, rededicate, rededicate what you call it. And I, I've done that a lot, but so, uh, there at the house that night, I'm, a, I'm a, in my mind, I'm talking to the Lord. And I said, I'm sorry about this. And I'm sorry about that. And uh, so I'm praying. Nobody heard me. It was just in my mind. I finally got enough relief in my conscience. I went to bed. Got up and went to work. But I was, pr I was pressured in my soul to get back to the meeting all day long. And they had work come in that held me over. And it's awful. I couldn't go. I wanted, now I want to go to the meeting, can't get there. And I'm, I have another rough day and night. So I determined, and I was so, uh, 
uh, I can think I was intimidated by most it, it, any person. When someone's just talking to me, I'm, I'm looking at the ground, you know, I can look them in the face most, most of the time. But I was determined Friday morning, I got to work, parked in that little alley back behind the building and walked through, went right to the office and told the boss, this is something I've never done, uh, never told anybody, it's always yes sir, yes ma'am, and so on. But uh, I walked to him, I said, we're gonna get our work out on early today because I'm going to the meeting. And uh, so he got, he, he got out of his chair and walked, followed me back into the garage. He said, uh, Jay, you be careful. He said, uh, we Methodists know that. You go out there, that those Baptists make you go Bible crazy. And uh, so I got, I got out there on Friday night. Now this is, y'all heard it, okay, you hear it again. So the preacher's message, and he gave a title for it. He said, after death cometh the judgment. That was the title. Boy, he went to preaching about the judgment. And uh, I, in, in, my, in my being, I really, I, I'm gonna tell you something, I, I really, I don't have, I don't have any reason right now not to believe what happened. That I was going to die that night and go to the judgment. So I'm really hyped up while he's preaching because he's already got me over in the judgment. Let me judge for all these things. And I'm just confessing away. Uh, Lord, the whole time the men's preaching, I'm confessing to the Lord. And finally, he's through preaching. Looks like everybody's going to turn the lights out and go home. And all I could see was I'm going to walk out and, and did and go to the judgment. So it was kind of, it was kind of a last ditch effort. It's look, no help for me. I can't be saved. I can't be forgiven. And I just tilt my head up and look. I, it's like I could look right through the ceiling into the sky, it just seemed like it. But I knew God could hear me. And I said, Jesus. I didn't even use the word Jesus in cussing, much less prayer or anything else. But that night I said, Jesus, if you just forgive me, I'll live for you. And just that quick, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, instantly, instantly, uh, he delivered me of those old devils and just delivered me. I mean, life changed in a second. And uh, I wanted, I, I, Mr. Mathis, I really want to talk to him. I didn't know I didn't know very many people at all in the church. And uh, Mr. Mathis, I serviced his truck and kind of almost daily. And uh, so I had a lot of he was a chairman deacon there. I had a lot of confidence. I had a lot of confidence in him. I wanted to talk to him. So almost I got back. So they closed the meeting. I mean, when, just after I'm praying, they closed the meeting. And uh, I didn't know it was, I didn't know nothing about the meeting, but they just closed it. And I was a little bit disappointed they closed it. And uh, so then Sunday morning, uh, I, I uh, patches got my blue jeans neat, you know, shirt neat, dress from church. And I got there early. I stood there waiting for Mr. Mathis with the roundup. A few fellows came and one who turned out to be, he was uh, a little distant kin to my dad actually, but he turned out to be my brother-in-law in time, you know, Mary Patsy's sister. And uh, he's one that said, uh, 
I said, I always wish to met if Matthew Scott there. I said, okay, I'm going to tell you all what happened. And I want y'all to tell me what it is. Uh, the, the Baptist that I, all the Baptists I've been around and grew up, uh, you couldn't say you got saved again. That's a, that's a sin to say that. And just get saved one time. Well, that's true. You just get saved one time. But I, the, the saying was once, once saved, always saved, you know. But because I've been baptized at the age of 11, they said, you know, you can't do it again. But I was wondering, Mr. Matthew said, you got saved. Everybody was scared to say that word, and I, was, I guess I was too. And I said, I'm going to tell y'all what happened to me, and then y'all tell me what it is. So I began to talk about how I confessed my sins. I said, but when the Lord forgave me, this is not like any rededication I've ever experienced. I mean, this is real forgiveness. It's like, this is real forgiveness. And uh, Doug, uh, Doug said, uh, oh, you had a second blessing. And Brother Matt said, no, Doug said, that's the method, that's the uh, uh, Nazarenes down the road said that what, what Jay's had is a deeper experience. And I said, okay. They, did, they didn't say save, but I, so I went around saying I had a deeper experience. And, uh, but, but by the Bible, just reading the Bible and listening to the Spirit of the Lord, I found out that was saved. When he forgave me my sins, that was saved. And say, and that's saved forever. Mm -hmm. It's real forgiveness. And, uh, and so, isn't that something? Yes. Your sin's forgiven. The warehouse of sin is empty. And, uh, and the Bible calls that saved. I said, wow. Amen. I, I wanted them to say saved on, uh, on the third day. I wanted them to say that. I think they were just too scared of the Baptists to say it, actually. But to me, I was looking for truth. And... Uh, when he forgives you your sins, you're saved. Uh, saved, some think that saved is a knockdown experience. And you said it, got ideas what it's going to be like. It's not going to be what you think. Never. And never, never what you think. And, uh, but it, I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven. That's saved. And that's saved. <clears throat> Didn't mean it ripped off that. No, you just pick no, up anywhere you want to. I, I'm, no, no, no. I, I just wanted to, whenever you were done, I was going to share something else separate. But in Acts chapter 10, <clears throat> this is where Peter and Cornelius meet up. Yeah. And in verse 34, then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. So if anybody has the idea, well, God don't want me, or mm -hmm. God, I, maybe I've gone to, no, 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 no. He's no respecter of persons. And But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. Then, and he says, the word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. And then moving down to verse 43, to him give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. And then while, the next verse, while Peter yet spake these words... He was still preaching. Mm -hmm. yeah. The Holy Ghost fell on all of them. Mm -hmm. 
which heard the word. He, he didn't even get to the invitation. <laughs> and they believed and were and and others were astonished. It was and, and the holy a gift, uh, poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost, and they were baptized. Amen. And they, they couldn't wait. Couldn't wait for the invitation. Well, We've seen some of that this in this meeting. Like, uh, Jericho Smith is preaching the Lord. Just took it away. He just took it away from him. That's what happened to Peter. He just uh, took it away from him. Somebody, somebody, somebody will remember or remember talking about it. You weren't there. The younger generation weren't there. But uh, anyway, brother, brother Ray, I handed over to brother J. Harold Smith to preach, and he was going to preach his. Uh, Famous message, God's three deadlines. And to give you background on that, he was over at Little Rock, Arkansas. We're talking about that goes back many, many years ago. And uh, preaching a revival meeting at Baptist Church, and the crowds got to growing, so uh, they got stirred up. And the church, Altum, I, don't know what, I don't know what size Altum was, but it they went big, and so moved out into a gymnasium, which was right there in the rock, and uh, and and took up with picked up, you know. And uh, I mean, they, they had a lot of people getting saved. And uh, but anyway, there were three businessmen, and they had a little place they they had their drinks. I call drinks, and and then they together, and then walk up, and they and they walk right by the the gymnasium, and said, and one of them said, let's go in and see what all this stuff is about. And they, and when they went in, the door they went in, there was in the bleachers that was kind of close to the pulpit, and uh, and, and pretty much empty, I guess, step behind it. And they came in, sat down, you know. Well, here comes a woman down the aisle. She's she's walking down the aisle in the where they had fixed her coming down and have prayer. And one of them spoke to the other and said, "There's your girlfriends." Uh, said, to, and it was a, it was mockery. I don't guess you'll have her anymore. And. Uh, so Jerry Earl Smith, they, they were mocking and disruptive. And Jerry Earl Smith just stopped, looked, and he said, folks, I don't know who these three men are, but they just blasphemed the Holy Ghost. And in 18 hours, all three of them would be dead. And, uh, and the three made their exit. Uh, then as the day went on, one of those men had an office there in the, kind of a high building looking out toward the west, the window, and the sun was getting low. He had a secretary to come in and begin to uh, dictate what to do, last minute affairs, and she's concerned. I mean, he's this is this is like he's thinking he's just going to die. And then he said, "You see that son? My two friends are already dead. They died today. And before the sun goes down, I'll die." He finished dictating, and he died. So the the story was, you know the. Seven sons of Sceva in Ephesus, you know, at, at, when they uh, whooped on that man, uh, the, the, uh, the man whooped on them, and ran, anyway, and that was thrust out into the city, the story about it. Well, that's what happened here. And boy, the fear of God fell on a lot of people. And... Uh, so then he's preaching God's three deadlines in our camp meeting in Myrtle. 
And so he starts, and he starts, I, I, I said, Brother, Brother Bill, and we got down to the altar together. I said, now, Brother Bill, Brother Jay Harrell's a powerful preacher, but he gives the lousiest invitations. That was just my words. I said, I want you to agree with me that God will give the invitation before he, before he can finish. And Brother Breal agreed with me. And we, we believe God. So he's preaching away and he's right in the end of his, he had three points. And he's right at the end of his second point. And suddenly, Holy Ghost gave an invitation. Fell on that building. There were 60 some, 64 people, I guess, we prayed with that uh, come down there wanting to get saved. And, uh, uh, and, 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 and they got so shouting and, and, and hurt shouting was so that he had to quit preaching. It overcame the sound and he had to stop. He picked up his third point later, didn't mean anything, but he, he did it. We went on up to our room where we always, back in those days, when the Lord had us give us a job and we did it, you know, as part of the camp meeting. And so, and I would go by, and this is kind of what we did. I'd go by where the, where they, have virtually everything, and they'd have, they wouldn't, not everybody would, I'd have some left over. Well, so they was looking for me, and I would uh, get some hamburgers, especially milk. The pastor, my pastor liked milk. And so, come up to our, our table in, in the middle of the room that they're, reg we call it registration building. And uh, so brought the burgers and, and the milk. Here comes, uh, so, uh, some of them caught on, you know, and they, they, they would come and gather with us. And uh, I usually ask a question, my pastor question, and uh, it's a loaded question to get him talking. And he's, oh, oh we had some good times. But he come in this night that we're talking about, and he looked at us. He looked at the two of us and said, we took it away from him, didn't we? <laughs> he knew what we was praying. He knew, he, the Lord told him what we was praying. Under praying. Um, and, uh, and it's just like, you, it's just like that, brother. Just like that at Cornelius' house. God just failed. Uh, I don't think I'd ever heard anything like that before, no sense. Uh, but we got to have it that, that time. Worthwhile. Good to see God move. Mm -hmm. Still happening. Deal with hearts. Amen. That's because he's a caring God. He loves. Cares for us. Well, amen. Thank you, Jesus. So good stuff. What else you got there? I remember in those talking about that room with all the preachers and how it was about JD or Joshua size or smaller. I sit next to him, but had to be very quiet. But I remember being there. And so I got to be in on you know, fly on the wall. I got to be in on some of those things. And I still wouldn't have missed out on everything if I hadn't been saved 12 weeks ago. Didn't mean a thing. Didn't mean a thing where I came from and where I was uh, and unless I met him, met Jesus, and he forgave us. Anyway, I just want to mention that. I thought that was important because pedigree means nothing. Where you came from, who your parents are means nothing. He means everything. No respecter of persons. You yes. come from nowhere. That, that doesn't matter. He's the same. 
And uh, anyway, he makes a difference, not us. Yeah, um, uh, they're so, it's just so full. And yeah, you've been preaching a lot of the things that I've, I've read. So I've been, it's been opened up uh, again around um, Paul, Saul, and well, let's see, where was it? Stephen. Let's see, I think that was chapter five. Yes, chapter six. In, in verse eight, Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. He was full of God. Yes. And <clears throat> he, he, he was in the synagogue, um, preaching, and they were listening, but they were they were wanting to dispute him. And, and uh, Sister Becky sent this verse, and they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake, not able to resist Jesus, God that was speaking through him. He's full of God. Um, and of course, they got stirred up, and they, uh, but he was preaching tough. Yeah. And and he he laid it all out for him, but he he was he wasn't pulling pulling any punches. He let them know, but he started way back and took them through what they agreed with first with Moses yes. and where they yeah. came from. There, yes, yes, yes. And then he got to, and then then he sent his son, and you crucified him, and you put him to death, and blood was on your hands, and then that's where they diverged and they got so mad and i've heard this preached before i think you've preached it before i know you have about others too but they got so mad they gnashed on him with their teeth to be talk about that rage and anger where does that rage and anger come from it's it's when your your true self gets exposed it comes into the light don't like that and and uh, or when you see yourself as in the as your true self that's hard to see but that's that's when it gets uh, gets tough but instead of taking it out and looking at them and repenting they took it out on Steve and anyway we know what happened there with uh, God still used it turned it for good with uh, Saul then to become Paul but um, I'll never forget, of course, Brother Boatner's message title about, well, Jesus didn't take it sitting down. And he says he stood up on the right hand of God and received him. Uh, but it also says Stephen fell asleep. He let his passing be, um, be easy. But they stoned him. And he, he still says, don't lay it to their charge. And he was... So much, so full of God being like um, our Savior who said the same um, when he was here on earth. Anyway, it was a lot of things. Um, it's just so full. I can't take it all in at once. Uh, but it's, uh, it's such a good book. Such a good book. But um, a lot of good stuff. I can't wait to, whenever the time's right, to... Uh, be able to share the the message that Lord's given. I hope it comes across the way He wants it to. But um, that's some some good stuff. Some good stuff. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But it also talks about there. Cut to the heart. That it says that a few times. And I oh forgot about that. And then what you got? What you got? Oh, you said about cut to the heart. They were cut to the heart when Peter was preaching. Yeah. They were getting these folks cut to the heart, and they didn't. Right. Yeah. Right. They went the other way. They went the other way. Um. Then these fellows at the synagogue. Uh, those are wicked. That they 
they were exposed before he gets preached to the council. Mm -hmm. And uh, but they were not. They, they, they were going. To, they were not. Oh yes, they were whipped. They were literally whipped down by the preaching of Stephen. But they weren't going to. They weren't going to accept it. That is, it's not only do they have rage now, but they hire uh, some fellows to lie and lie on Stephen. It kind of kind of lies to get you killed in their day, and uh, that's what they did. And then when he gets through preaching to the councils, what they did. They all were in the same. They they had religion and uh, without God. It's just you know uh, when uh, the. Uh, we know that Mark lives there in Jerusalem, or did, and his mother Mary, and they had a big house with a big upper room, you know. But there, there are few, there were few that got saved in Jerusalem. Uh, God had planned on Jerusalem for the for the church to have its foundation. There was, it's always been God's choice. New Jerusalem is God's choice to replace old Jerusalem, which is coming down pretty soon now. Now, the, uh, the Lord, he grew up in Nazareth, which is a Galilean uh, communities all around the Sea of Galilee are called Galileans, where the, whatever village city they had. And uh, so then uh, it is, uh, there's where people to get him saved. It's where, it's where John the Baptist started his preaching on the on coming out of the wilderness there at uh, Jordan River, right there at the uh, Galilee, right there Galilee. That's where he started. That's where God had started. So now uh, we find that the, those, especially the women who followed the Lord, they, they did ministry, uh, keeping clothes clean preparing food and so forth. They, they read it. Luke even talks about it, chapter 8. But uh, there were Galileans. So when you just look look back here in the first chapter of Acts, and Luke is, is in, he's in the crowd. He's in the crowd. Those that are, there, there's, Verse number four, and being assembled together. Now, he says that we're in the building. It appears the Lord just showed up those few times. Like in John chapter 21, it was the third time that he made himself known to the, the disciple, made an appearance. He ascended to heaven on the day of resurrection, but he's back and forth making appearances. He's not living on earth. He's already in heaven, but he comes down for an appearance. And uh, so that's what happens here in the first chapter. And uh, verse number three, Luke says, to whom also he showed himself alive after the, his passion, uh, many infallible proofs being seen of them 40 days. So it's a 40 day period so each time that he made an appearance, it was in this 40 days. And now they're at the end of the 40 days, and they're walking together out toward Bethany, actually. And uh, verse number four, being assembled, and uh, uh, he commanded them they should not 
part of, from Jerusalem. So now they're they're out of out of Jerusalem, walking out uh, out of town here. And uh, he said, "But you go to Jerusalem, stay in Jerusalem, and wait for the promise of the Father." And uh, John, true to baptize with water, he should be baptized with the Holy Ghost. And uh, they do ask me, said, is, is it, see, all, they were all, the, through the whole three years, or, or three and a half years, he was, they were expecting the, the, the gospel of the kingdom would be preached. And they expected to appear most any time. And they're asking me, is this the time fixing to appear? He said, no, that's, that's in the Father's power, okay? So then uh, uh, he gives them some uh, instruction. He's, and then he was taken up and cloud received him. Uh, the two men in white apparel you're standing beside this and, and said, you men of, now notice verse 11, which also said, you men of Jerusalem? No. <laughs> you men of Galilee. Why well, stand you here gazing? See, this, this uh, nucleus of the, of the church assembled with the Lord walk out there, they're from Galilee. If you let me use a, a, a word, they bust them. They just bust them from Galilee to Jerusalem <laughs> and, ha, and set the church. How about that? Put this out in Galilee. And, it's, and this way. And then when, uh, let's, let's look at the third chapter. When Peter and John go up to the uh, temple at the hour in the afternoon, mid-afternoon for the hour of worship. And they get there, the gate beautiful. And that's when the, the man who's above 40 years of age, never walked before. And Peter says, such, uh, said, uh, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have or we have uh, give unto thee. And uh, the Lord he took him by the right hand, his ankle, uh, what is it called? His ankle bones, all that receives strength. And he began to leap. In verse 8, and he leaping up stood up and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. What a day! What a day! And uh, so then, back up to verse number 6 when he's saying that, but such as I have give I and uh, thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth mm -hmm. rise up and walk. That's Galilean. Mm -hmm. That's Galilean. And when these days New Jerusalem's coming down, replace old Jerusalem and we'll come down with it. We're going to ride our house all the way down. Even our horses won't be disturbed. And we'll come out. Once it sets down, we're going to come out riding. Amen. <clears throat> and they said, somebody said, somebody said, can anything good come out of Frazier? <laughs> <laughs> or are y'all still in Frazier? Yeah, we took it. I think, if I'm not mistaken, someone once said to Brother Melvin, I think, I think, years ago, so aren't you afraid? Aren't you afraid staying in Frazier? It's always good to be where the Lord is. Yes. Well, amen. Some good things. Good things. It's by the uh, mercies and the goodness of the Lord. And uh, what, a, what a Savior.
that he would save someone like we. <laughs> the second half of the verse, um, Acts 14, 26 says, they have been recommended to the grace of God for the work which they fulfilled. So I highly recommend getting saved, letting him change your life, making you new. You will not regret it ever, ever, ever. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. That's good. Thank you, Brother Greg. Amen. Amen. Let's see. Who are we going to call? Uh, how about Harriet? Sister Harriet, come, you come sit in the hot seat. Uh, Good morning, teacher. Morning. <laughs> and you're you're going to be going to school. Hey, yes, sir. Hey, yeah. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. I guess we could see more of you. Yes, yes, sir. Get to spend summer here. Christmas, maybe. Play hooking come another time. <laughs> uh, uh, we like that. We like that. Amen. Woof. Uh, Eric, how old are you now? Oh, I, yeah. I just Excuse turned me. 23 this month. 23. 23. Oh, my goodness. I mean, when you threw you. Uh, ah, have to let you grow up, you know. Amen. Well, I'm glad y'all decided to come here. What a blessing it is to us. Amen. And praise the Lord. Uh, now, most of the Ladies, like uh, Elvie, we were watching Elvie this morning for, my goodness, two months. They got a property, got walls, got a building started, got a, the uh, bamboo temper, temporary house, the kitchen almost completed. Uh, my goodness, in two months, in two months. But we remember when they got married years ago. Now they got a family. Don uh, Don, he's, he's that tall, you know, my goodness. I guess he's, I think he's taller than his dad, didn't he? Looks like him. Anyway, they got a fine family. The point is, she went to school up there. And Brother Brian went to school up there. And then they announced she's going to get married. We had a part in that. We've had a little, little part in their life ever since for 16 years. You fix and go to school, you're probably going to find a man up there. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm just telling you, that's what happens to all the ladies who go up there. So, I'm going to say this. If you do, let it be the will of God. Don't push it. Don't rush into anything. I'm just one of them, man. What are you, what are you smiling at? What you see is what you get. It's always been that way. Amen. 23, my goodness. Wow. 
You should go on that, girl. How many girls we got in here? There's 23, at least 23. There's one. 23 or more. 23 or more? Girls. Girls. Okay. So we got we got some young ladies that they uh, they probably like you a lot, <laughs> especially if they've already been to your home. And uh, the last time we was there, we didn't go to the. I think y'all came to us, and uh, 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 when we go back, and when we when we put let's see, potentially. When we go back in February. Amen. We get to look at the building. Maybe I'm praying a little bit. A lot's happening. A lot's happened. And we're we're glad also. Okay. Here we go. Catch on these things. I want, I'm gonna, I give you two guesses, three guesses. Who is this? It says, delete and report as junk. Yeah. Every day when we have Bible study, these people, it's a Christian bookstore, and they're not very Christian. Being mean again, on a forgive me, Lord. I'm sorry about that. Amen. But I do like good reports to come in on the farm, and uh, we give a lot of thanks for that. All right. Well, we got uh, just a lot of things happening, but we like we like good things. We like good things. And this is a good thing. So we like this too. My goodness. When we when we saw you last, little did we expect to see you sitting here. How about that? How about that? Lots happened. Yes. Yes, a lot's happened. But we take the good any day. If you got something good to say, just say it. Do we have something there? Oh, so for the Jason, you were saying amen, Brother Greg. Right. Right. Brother Jason, listen to you on the job. And I like these fellows that can work with them things in the ear and listen while they work like that. And... Uh, yeah, that's that's where some of our folks are. I realize that. And uh, how many, Sister Sister Olivia, how many is involved in taking care of Sister Maddie and, and Baby Noah? Probably the entire church. <laughs> uh, but at the moment, he's at a checkup, and uh, he's had to get a lot of things done. I don't know if they've gotten back yet, but I think everything's going well. All right, all right. And have they got the social security number yet? Not know. Okay. We found out a lot of things this week. We got baby, baby Noah. And uh, you, you know, when you're born now, the days, not like, see, I was 16 when I got my Social Security number. And, uh, uh, but anyway, now it's when you're born. Well, either the baby's born, don't have Social Security number. And the insurance company says, we can't help you because you don't have Social Security number. And the hospital said, well, we can't give you Social Security number. That's the Social Security Department. That's the reason I was asked that question. So how do you, I mean, how, what do you do? Take the baby to the Social Security Department? Say, we have an appointment. The baby wants to talk to you. Uh, and wow, yeah, give, give him a number. Uh, uh, 
but anyway, th this is, I found out this is important for insurance. And then, uh, uh, brother, uh, brother John Raven has wonderful insurance with uh, Amazon. And they're going to give him so many days he can take uh, to be with the wife and baby. And he don't have to take it all. At one time, he take part of it down. Christmas took another part of it. Isn't that something? But anyway, this, this social security number for, for Noah uh, Ray is necessary for all this to function the way. The insurance people say, well, you can't do this until we get a social security number. Yeah. It reminded me when, uh, uh, when I, I tried to get a job back uh, when, back when I was, uh, in fact, I did get a job, part-time job when I was 16. That's why I had to have a social security number. But I tried to get a job, um, I guess when I was, 18, 19, 19, I guess, trying to get a job. Uh, always had a job, but I'm talking about a, a paid job, you know. We call it, that's what we call it. On the farm, you know, you, you might make 50 cents a day, uh, but a real job. I knew some fellows that worked for the railroad. They made $275 a, a week, $275. And and the the best job I could find uh, when it, when it was available, laboring on the farms, uh, the, the, the some of the best job was two dollars. And uh, but back when when I was on the farm, I could I had no two dollars a day job. It's more like fifty cent. I was trying. To, okay, here we go. My story. I was trying to get a job. And so I, I talked to him, I said, well, who do you know that can recommend you at, at, the, at the railroad? And then, how much experience do you have? Man, I'm, I'm 19 years old, and they want to know how much experience I have. And I don't have any experience, well, we can't hire you. So I, I came to Memphis. I thought, boy, if I get me a job at the International Harvester, whether it's building machinery, tractors, or if I could get to the uh, Firestone Tire Place. And what they say, two things. One is, who here has recommended you? Who do you know? Both places now. They said, and then what was the second question? How much experience do you have? So that's what this reminds me of. You can't do all this. Where's the social security number? I tell you what, I would I would be on the phone, on my hands and knees, driving back and forth, social security department, give me a number for my son. You do what I say, and they'll probably throw you out. <clears throat> uh, but in it in it something you run into these things, you learn them by experience. That, that there's uh, not everything is easily accomplished. And uh, um, I remember, I mean, you had to have an interview to be qualified, something from the school. The school had to write something and you had to interview somebody. And then they had to say whether they would allow you to do that or not. And then they say, well, how, how much experience do you have? No doubt they asked you that. But here you are. You're in America. You're going to school. And you got credentials. Uh, and we're proud for you. We're proud for you. Thank you, preacher. Hey. Okay, and Sister Digna is gonna be crying. I gotta leave my, I gotta leave my oh. girl. Bye. I'm gonna get you ready now. Get you crying over. Here.
Oh, thank you. <coughs> yeah. so, we need to leave on the high note, preacher. On a high note. Oh, yeah. Cry again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, uh, yeah. But I feel better about it myself. Because when I uh, try to try to have something on the line, it's too by the time the girl was too far. So I feel better about it. So you cry and I'll laugh. I'm, I'll be happy. Happy laugh. Uh, anyway. Well, it's because we we yeah, we love you. But who can tell? Uh, that's what they said at Nineveh, you know. When the Jonah come town preaching. And it was like when I got preached too, he said, it's over with, it's just over with. And the king said, I'm, I'm making a, a decree. You can finish this bit. I'm, Paraphrase, confess your sins, put sackcloth on your cows, on yourselves, and uh, put away wickedness and pray, and then see who can tell what God might do. God, so, he's so wonderful. He's got plans when we don't know how to plan. He got ways of putting things together when we can't do it ourselves. So I'm for I'm for what God does and what He puts together. Because He has has good things in mind when He does. Because God's always cared about you. And and uh, you're gonna find Matthew again in Luke. I, I think I got that right. But uh He's ready to give good things to those that ask him. So I'm for good things. I'm for good. I'm, I'm just for good things. I'm really for good things. And uh, so we thank God for that. Okay, I've already got into overtime here, uh, but it's good overtime. Good over time. All right. Love you, everybody. Both sides of the world. Love you, everybody. And uh, oh, Sister Eva saw you and the boys running with Brother Brian uh, around in the lot there, giving thanks of what uh, the Lord has given you in two months' time. I tell you what, we kind of shouted when you was running, shouting too. And just want to say, if you're watching, we still love you and quit. We're still happy about things. All right. We love you, everyone. And uh, don't know what the day's going to hold yet. Uh, but, but we want a good checkup on Noah Ray. Uh, we want a good checkup on Mama Maddie. Uh, we want a good checkup on the daddy who's having a nervous breakdown. And help him drive good, too. And uh, we just want good reports on that. Everybody getting home safe. And I'm serious about the Social Security number. I hope you already got it. But whatever it takes, we want you to have it. And so let's get a Social Security number. Is that all right? Hey. You can pray yes. for that. Yes, yes. Okay, let's get that. It, they may have already gotten it done. I'm happy to have they had let's get it done. And thank you, Jesus. All right, love you. See you this time tonight. How about that? See you at six. Okay. Famous words. Yeah,